Right, welcome back to part two of episode 11. Uh, if you're trying to keep up with the numering system, uh, numeral system of this podcast, good luck, because it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, Alan has gladly and gratefully come back to uh, finish off. So my next choice is an area on the defender, because he's just the best. He's the ultimate tragic hero. I'll take your silence as complete agreement with what I'm saying here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this is this is this this is the guy who got corrupted by Marathi, right? Yeah. Yes and no. He's um wait, wait, did that never happen either? No, that did happen. But he, no, he, he, happen. he yeah. snapped out of it after a while. And after his best friend sort of said, "I'm out of here. You, you've gone mad." Uh, but yeah, he's the um, the first Phoenix King who uh, repels the initial chaos invasion after the well, the, the lizard men try and fail. Um, they're overrun. Demons invade. The elves have got this sort of um, at one with nature. Uh, existence going on. There's the Ever Queen still is exist at that point, but there's no army or anything. And he um, he's an adventurer, so he comes back after seafaring, find out there's this chaos invasion going on, um, and offers to sacrifice himself to a Syrian in return for some help of the of the gods. Uh, this is where he throws himself into the flame of a Syrian, um, right. which doesn't kill him. Even no matter how long he stays in for, it actually infuses him with a bit of Assyrian's power, in which he goes on a demon stomping rampage, which uh, overcomes the first invasion. Then later on, there's a second invasion. Um, I think it's I don't think it's part of the first one, but anyway, his wife and children get um, well. He thinks they get killed. His children actually aren't. There's some sort of deal with the forest spirits to whisk them away which is some sort of connection to the Wood Elves. So when his wife, he thinks his wife and children might have gone, yeah, he goes insane and draws the Sword of Cain, which curses his bloodline forever. Um, but now he's got the power of Assyrian and he's wielding the Sword of Cain and he's unstoppable. Uh, so he, again, butchers all the demons, um, sets up this new court in Nagarith, um, at this point, he's met Marathi, who's, well, not good for him. It's not a good match. And then <laughs> that's that's where um, the court turns into this sort of bloody uh, excess, um, loads of murders. He, he goes off the rails. This is where his friend Calador, who's the, the great mage, says, um, I, I don't want anything to do with you. Demons come back again. Uh, Calador works out that he's got to drain the magic from the polar vortexes because that's what's sustaining the demons in the material world. Um, he tells Mal um, not Malekith, don't get that wrong, tells Anarion that's um, his plan. Anarion disagrees. Um, he says, I'm doing it anyway. So Anarion eventually swallows his pride, goes to help his friend while he's defending the um, ritual. Uh, he takes on and kills uh, four greater demons because he's just that good um, manages to hold off the demon army while Calador drain, starts the vortex off at the end of the battle he um, flies on his dragon back to um, is it the island of blood no what's it called Shrine of Cain yeah, Shrine yeah of the Cain. Shrine of Cain yeah. yeah puts the sword back and then dies and his body's never found and uh, that's the tragic history of Anarion, who's a true hero. And again, it's one of these things where they, by just ripping off other fantasy tropes, they've managed to create something that's really good and better than a lot of the other more, no, it's not more genuine, but more established um, fantasy hero characters. Who, who is the guy who's dragon bit the head off 
a greater demon of Zinch, and then his dragon turned into Galruk. That is... That's a, like is that not a Caledorian noble? Is that not one of the? Oh, previous... okay. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't him then. Okay. No. Um, cheating. Look this up. I'm looking now. Actually, <laughs> yeah. it's not one of the Imrics, is it? Uh, oh, it's the Valiant Dragon Prince Leofin. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Whoever he is. Okay. Come on. Yeah. But it was. But. Yeah, so the most renowned of these duels was the one that was decided at the Battle of the Isle of the Dead. There's the isle. Where Lord Inarion and his dragon, can't pronounce it. Um, Draugnir. In, in Draugnir, fought against four greater demons, one sent by each of the dark gods. During the same battle, the valiant dragon prince Leofin and his mount Galruk the Goldrake. Yeah, there you go. And they go yeah, on. There you go. See, it happened at the same time. Yeah, so I, knew it was, I knew it was around yeah. that period. Yeah, I just similar. Know. First Chaos Jagna. It's like a, this is a, a elf sized man. No, that's not right. Try it again. He's just a normal elf. Elf sized elf <laughs> who can kill four greater demons. Yeah, like I remember seeing some artwork. A black and white artwork and it's like an area and just on like a rock and then there's like a big greater demon of sun f like yes i've seen demon. that yeah and i think it's just a classic bit of art and it's like yeah this guy goes on to have you seen yeah. have you seen the image of uh an area in his armor and in draugnir um it's not the front of the high elf book i keep thinking it is but it's not and i would like that frame speaking of artwork because it's it's great um, oh. I'll, try, I'll try to link it to you actually. Oh, I've got it here. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, and Jogni is behind in, like it. his golden arm. Yeah, he's in the golden armor. Yeah, yeah, his dragon behind him. Yeah, it, um, that's the really heroic artwork there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's love the the like the amount of suffering that he takes on himself and dooms his line, and he's just doing it all to save his race. Against what is a you know, seemingly impossible to defeat, as it turned out, it's not. Um, and it's just like it's, it, it, he does get corrupted by his own sort of grief and hatred, and it sort of it explains the dual nature of what happens to the elves, and, and well, it sort of explains what happens to all three branches of the elves, really, because his most noble, self-sacrificing side of him before he draws the sword. Is that he's willing to like give up his own life to protect his these race and um and he's you know he's he's able to do that and he's successful at it. And then there's the deal that is it it's not Durthu that they do the deal with to protect these um children, but he doesn't know anything about that. But that sort of leads into the formation of the wood elves much later on down the line. And then after he's drawn the sword, it's just like the cruelty and the um murder lust that he gets and that sort of hints at the dark elves and how the, that that side of the elven character and then he's got this redemption that um he snaps out of it and sacrifices himself finally to just to give his friend a chance at um saving the world and it's like he's sort of the he's sort of the elven race encapsulated in one story and I think that's again. It's just like I don't know if they intended to do it, but it's just I find it really well done. Um, yeah. it, I, I do like the story of Anarian, and he's obviously you know the every all the other Phoenix Kings from then on afterwards are always talking about him. Yeah, the whole race is always talking about him. They all want to live up to his ideals. The, the statues of him all over um, uh, Lothan and. Yeah, like I've read the Tyrian book, and it was—I mean, it's all right. But the best bits of it are the depictions of how the Elven court works. But the, 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 the defenders of Ulf one or whatever. Yeah, there's like the there's the omnibus. There's Tyrian, Teclis, and then there's the one that Malekith's in. I don't know what it's called. Um, but at the very the prologue is sort of a depiction of his decision to go and help Kalador. And how he fights the 
um, four greater demons. And it's not like he just turns up and slays them. It's like he's getting really, every one of them is borderline killing them. And it's like the dragon burns the um, greater demon of Nurgle up, but it also gets its guts ripped out and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's really underlines that he's not just like, oh, I'll nip over there and have a bit of a fight. It's like he's really <laughs> expending everything he's got to keep the um, to keep Ultimate together. So it's like, it's like as deep in the law as you want to get. That's what I, I like about Anarian. Yeah, I, yeah, it's a good story. I, you know, um, I just I knew you'd say something like that. <laughs> I, I was like, you know, it's obvious. You know, war, like... started with War of the Beard, and then <laughs> is is your number one thing, Alario and White Lionhood? Is that... uh, it's it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's <laughs> that's why I went with this one first to disarm you. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think they should give an area and rules, and he should be like he should have. It gives White Lions a one-up re-rollable ward save, and makes them all strength ten. No, but it, it like. I can't believe how much you know about high elves. It always surprised me every time you you, you know you start on. I used but, to be able to name all the Phoenix Kings in orders. I I, I can't quite do it still, but uh, I just learned, I can read it forever. Like it's this is it's like it's not real, but this is real. This is this is the proper stuff. <laughs> this is what happened. This is the problems they fought for faced. Yeah. So it's not just the white lion horde with Alaria that I like about the high elves. Like, it's, what, the whole, what, it's the whole thing. <laughs> what would an Arion think knowing that his true born son would not go on to be Phoenix King after him? Like, it's... Well, I don't think it's ever clear that he intended it to be a hereditary monarchy, but he probably did. But then he also probably didn't intend for Malekith to go mad and try to poison the entire. <laughs> Princely council, and maybe himself. he wouldn't have gone mad if the guy hadn't picked up the sword of Cain, whatever. But there you go. It's probably a, I never said he was perfect. He's a flawed hero. <laughs> he no, should... what about Mel- Melikiv's the flaw? He, Melikiv's the victim here. <laughs> well, for a given <laughs> value of victim, he, he could have just accepted uh, that he wasn't going to be king and being a continue to be an ambassador in general but uh, if, if no if had been stronger and not ha- and not taken the sword of Cain then Melikith would have been fine uh, I can't that, even give you a face I can't give you a great face <laughs> that sort of presupposes that Anarian would just be alright with demons killing his entire family <laughs> <laughs> oh shit happens I, I, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, I'll just have, have some more kids. <laughs> uh, well, you did, and that's what the problem was, really, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, so, like, Tyrion and Teclis are, like, descendants of an Aryan, then? Yes, they are. Uh, and is that why Tyrion goes nuts, then, as well? Depending on which timeline you believe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Okay. That's oh, the problem yeah. with that because, like in the Tyrion book, it's established that um, he hasn't suffered the um, curse of an Aryan. He's he's got all the benefits that like he's a brilliant swordsman and whatever, but he hasn't been tainted by the um, the possible insanity, and that's just overturned. And in the book where he meets uh, Finnybar, it's like yeah, there's like this otherworldly energy that's surrounding him and like emanating from him because he's got the like, the flame of a Syrian burns within him and he says yeah I, I see the world in a different way and I can perceive t- whatever it is and like oh no no that didn't happen it just he just had some mage protecting him from the fire for a bit and he's just a big fraud <laughs> no <laughs> that's not how it's depicted in the book yeah, whatever Never get sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting because my next one kind of ties into the, again to the one you've just said, and this is not scripted for those who are listening. Is this Malekith? <laughs> no. Um, my next thing is Demons of Chaos. Oh, right. 
Yeah. You'd never guess from the amount of demon lists you have played as. It's like, how many times have my channel has demons been on it? I love demons of chaos. I think they're brilliant. Like, I, you, I, Warriors of Chaos, well, let's have a history lesson. Um, first ever army I got Please given. What you know about demons? No, no, my first ever army that I got given as a kid was undead, the high elves and goblins, yeah? Got given them as a kid. The first army I actually ever purchased for myself was Chaos Space Marines. And that's where my love of the chaos came, right? And every year for about 10 years, I would build paint a brand new 1500 Chaos Space Marine army, yeah? I did like all the different guards, you know, different army lists. I had a lot of Chaos Space Marines. It's all gone now. It's all been sold because I'm silly. Um, but The Bretonian regret earlier. Time, <laughs> time stamp below. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's, you know, it's, um, I love Chaos, right? Love, 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 love the whole idea of it. Um, not that I would be a Chaos follower, but I'm just saying I love this whole, these gods that have spawned from, from man. They, they are from man that, you know, if we weren't around, they wouldn't be around. Yeah. And I love it. And when I, you know, when I moved into Warhammer uh, fantasy battles, I started with Warriors of Chaos because it was a natural step from Chaos Space Marines and these big angry Viking thing, you know, guys that was worship these dark gods and, their whole bit in life was to, you know, prove themselves to these gods and through victory and through sacrifice, you know, to ascend to demonhood. Um, and Warriors of Chaos, I still love, you know, um, you know, st still my, you know, my one of my favorite armies. But after playing Warriors of Chaos for so long. I moved into playing demons, which was again a natural extension from playing Warriors of Chaos, and I just love demons more. I love how chaotic, chaotic. I love how chaotic they are. You know, you roll for the magic phase, and something crazy will happen before you even, you know, start casting spells. Like um, say the Dark Prince first. The Dark Prince first. You know, funny thing about that, like the. I, whenever, you know, if I play my, my Nurgle one, if you look at my my games with Nurgle, I roll minus one ward save a lot. A lot. And it just so happens against Graham, I got the perfect <laughs> perfect ones, you know, <laughs> you know, for the Dark Prince first. Which is kind of apt, I feel, because I was playing Sinesh anyway. Yeah, but... this, Sinesh obviously had it. Uh, this is a reference to, I'll link it, the first game you published this month. But, uh... Yeah. Um, but no, I absolutely love demons. I love how it's just this idea that they there's count. You know, they're innumerable. Yeah, when they die, they just come back in the warp. Um, there's you know loads of different stories and you know fiction about them. I remember reading this 40k uh, story in a white dwarf about the first war of Armageddon, the first Armageddon war and where uh, the world eaters invaded led by what's his name the Primarch, demon Primarch Angron, of, Angron yeah so he's like a demon Primarch by this point yeah and the fight in you know He's got his like demon horde, and he's got like a retinue of like eight bloodthirsters. Demon Prionok got a bodyguard of eight bloodthirsters. How badass is that? And they're fighting against like a hundred Grey Knight Terminators, and it comes down to like the last Terminator and less Grey Knight Terminator and the Demon Prince Angron, and they kill each other. And, you know, Ang Angron says to him, you know, he's just like, you may have defeated me here, but I will go into the warp where I will be reborn. 
and I will feast on your soul for all eternity, you know, and it's just like, that's just so badass. That's just so grim, cool. that. It's grim, but it's so fucking cool how this guy can live, uh, can reach this, you know, this guy, you know, this Primark, can reach this level. It's a pretty high ascension. starting point. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's got a good starting point. But, you know, he can reach this level of ascension where he can turn into demonhood and therefore immortality. Obviously, it comes with a cost, but I just think it's brilliant. I love the whole thing about their secret names. Yeah, and this whole thing about knowing their name gives you power. And I know I'm crossing over into the 40k genre with this as well, because, you know, the Grey Knights have got their really, really, really long names, so the demons can't get power over them. I just think I just think it's brilliant. I, um... What's that? Back... So, what's that? Because they're all, like, um... They're sort of part of the patron god, aren't they? And yeah. they sort of and then the greater demons are sort of more powerful chunks of the god, and then when they get destroyed, they sort of re-merge with the god and then get re... But there's like, who's that keeper of secrets who's got two heads and he can see the future and the past, but he can't see oh, the present? It, it, it's a lord of change. Oh, lord of change, Kairos, sorry. Kairos Fate Weaver. That's yeah, it, that's so the guy. It's a really interesting one because he was just like a one-headed demon, uh, greater demon, I think, at one point. And... He was like conspiring against Deench, which is like the worst thing you can do. Conspire against the changer of ways. And he like throws him his body into the well of eternity. And he comes out not being able to see the present and he can only see the future and the past. It's like, how fucking cool is that? That's just cool. I'm not saying it's cool for Kairos, but it's just a cool concept. You know, the blue scribes is another one. So the god Zinch was the god Zinch was the most powerful god at one point until the other three gods declared war on him and like ganged up on him. And they when they defeated him, they scattered his soul or whatever into like millions of fragments, yeah. And each of these fragments is a different spell. So all the different spells that you have and all the different laws and all the different cantrips and all the different things that you may have is each one is a part of Zinch. And the blue scribes are going around trying to gather all the different spells, all the different... I remember these. All the different things. Did they have models at some point? Yeah, there's a pair of... There's two horrors on a disc with books. Yes, I remember them. Because find a spell, you know, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the, um, they write it down, um, they capture the spell and they take it to you know, the rebuilding each with every spell they find. But, you know, and the other thing, cool about thing is like the numbers of the gods. Each god's got its own number. Zinch, nine, corn, eight, Nurgle, seven, Sinesh, six. And it's like, you know, blue scribes are 81 points. The 81 points, which is nine, nine times nine. Brilliant. It, you know, it just, it's just little things like that, which makes them so cool. That's just Zinch. Nurgle's got its own thing, the Garden of Nurgle. I love it how he's like this god that is about festering and care. He's like caring and fatherly, and he has this garden, and then it's all his children. And but he's also this big disease bloated thing that's rotting at the core. It's just brilliant yeah, there's, there's descriptions of like um, greater demons of Nurgle, or demons of Nurgle, like almost looking after people and not really understanding that it's. What it's doing is is causing living things to die. That's, that's like beasts of Nurgle. So like beasts of Nurgle are like l- lovable puppies, and all they want to do is play with you and cuddle you. And so as they're cuddling you, they're like killing you because they don't understand. It's just like the toxins and stuff that come from their body or their mass. You know, it's just funny. It's just so. It's just so cool, you know. And it's you know. Um, I love the idea of that they've only got their own realm, so Corn's like this big blasted wasteland, and he's got his big brass keep, and he, you know the his flesh hounds are like patrolling the waste, dragging bodies to the to the um, to the brass keep where the blood letters are all fighting each other continuously. To you know, if you look at the special character Scarbrand, and it's like Scarbrand was like one of the top blood bloodthirsters but he dared try and take on corn yeah 
and he hit him corn with his axe and did like a tiny dink in his armor. So corn basically picked him up and threw him. And after like eight days of flying through the air, he landed and he like shattered all his wings and, you know, which is why he can't fly anymore or anything, you know, it's just cool. It's just cool. Yeah. Um, you know, the mask is another special character uh, for Sinesh. Um, she, she was Sinesh's most famous, fa- favored demonette. And she would do all these dances and stuff to like entertain him. And then one day he, Sinesh was pissed off because he just got, he just lost a, a battle, like a really, really bad loss against Korn or whatever. And so he's like all broody and in his castle. And the mask comes in. It's like, well, to cheer you up, I'm going to like do this wonderful dance. But it's the best dance she's ever done. And it's perfect. And, you know, this whole thing about perfection and stuff. And so, like, that pisses him off. That pisses Sinesh off because he's like, you're taunting me with your dance. And so he, he, he gives her this curse where she is destined to dance forever and she can't stop dancing now. Yeah. It's just, this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant, and I love, I love these little stories and um, just last one, last one. Special characters, uh, Kar- Karanat, the Bloodhound. So Corn gives him the scent for his favored hound to go chase down this prey and bring him back to Corn, and the three heads can track the the body, the, the prey through space and time, you know, the different heads, you know, they've all got their own different things. So they, you know, it's just fucking cool. It's just cool. The thing I like about, um, it's the gods and the demons as well, though. Um, it, it's more of a thing in fantasy in that there's, there's two sides to them. Like, like Korn's the God of like war and violence, but he's also sort of the God of honor and martial prowess yeah. yeah so he's got is it valkyrie valkyrie the bloody yeah. the, so she's the one of what she's ripping off in mythology but <laughs> it does have people to pick like great warriors to it's not just who's yeah it, it sort of is now that you know it's all about blood and stuff but it's not like you won't reward people for or didn't for um cowardice or anything yeah, yeah cowardice or butchering non-combatants Mm. Which is not really a thing in 40k. It's just you know, kill anyone. And Zinch and their sort of the, the appeal of Zinch is yeah, it's change and chaos and mutation, but it's also the only way for like hope and improvement. And that's what those demons also represent because they're not they're not necessarily evil. They're just following like the path that their god is on, mm. which may or may not because. The winds of magic are power of chaos, mm. at least until they're unthreaded and re put together as high magic. Uh, so it's like you, you still, they are a threat, but the world doesn't really work without them. And they're just the chaos energy manifest. Yeah, it, it's like the, the long and short of it is like the, the, the demons are the big body. Yeah. If any, you know, they're they're there when the old ones leave. They're yeah. the ones who are going to wipe out the high elves. They're the ones who are going to wipe out the dwarves. They're the ones who are going to wipe out the lizardmen. So on this map that we've just spoken about, these three big races, it's the demons who are going to kill them. Yeah, and it's um, it's you know, so they are the big baddie, and I like how it's you know, you've got. A wizard, you know, you could have like a battle between, I don't know, like Empire and well, I don't know, Orcs and Goblins, yeah? And they're having a battle. The wizard casts a spell that goes fucking wrong and a demon pops out. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know. Or oh, he's teleported into the realm of chaos. <laughs> you know, he's been teleported into the realm of chaos. I also like this concept about, you know, the whole thing about realm of chaos where time is is immaterial, yeah? doesn't work the same it's but it is a tangible place it's not like um that if you go into the the extreme north you will find like 
Nurgle's garden and stuff like that. It's not just yeah, you will pass into the realm of chaos. Yeah, yeah. back on another plane of it's existence through the polar gates, which have collapsed yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, I just think I just think they're so interesting in the 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 yeah, and and it you know the they're all flawed. They're all all of the chaos gods are flawed, and that makes them interesting. And I'll. I could go on about demons for ages, but, <laughs> but I love. But that that's in terms of the law. But in terms of playing them as well, I think it it's it's always it's always something new. So you don't get magical items; you have to roll to see what you get. Yeah, um, and even if you pay the points for those gifts, it's not worth it. Yeah, <laughs> the, the 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 gifts are shit. Yeah, you know, fifty fifty points for. A, you know, the best one on the 50 points one is the two up armor save. But, you know, 50 points for plus one wound. Now nah, I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. I've only had a demon army in, I think it was, God, it wasn't sixth. It may have been fifth or even maybe fifth or fourth. And it was the old metal bird flamers. Do you remember them? Yeah. And the pink horrors, that one, like the drummer the was. Big hand. Yeah, the big he was play, Yeah, I remember them. Yeah. And that was about it. Yeah, I, I just think I just think they're brilliant, and I, I you know there is some bad stuff in there, there's some good stuff in the in the army book, but I love how random they are. You know, uh, I also like the fact that they all hate each other. So it's like if you play <laughs> demons of corn, then you get hatred against demons of Sinesh and the opposite way round, and it's the same with like Nurgle and Zeech, and you know, and it's like oh, I roll on the table and I get. Um, what's it? This the Sinesh one that you mentioned earlier, and Dark Prince first. Yeah, the Dark Prince first, and it's like roll for all enemy units and units of Mark of Court. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and it's it's just it's just good. It's, yeah, yeah, they, 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 they don't get on. They were notoriously broken in seventh edition. I, I that's when I first started playing them. <laughs> uh yeah i first started playing uh, demons in seventh and they were broken they were seriously good and they got a big nerf in eight fed um, that's why allegedly banner of the world dragon came into being well because of the seventh edition demons apparently fair enough it should be 55 points though no the, there's, there's disagreement on that well there's not there's people who say it should be 50 points and there's people who are wrong. <laughs> so, there you go. But there, there's demons. Love it. Love them, love them, love them, love them, love them. When will we see... Oh, no, you've done them all, haven't you? You've done Corn. Yeah, but, do you, but they're on the horizon. Yeah, well, you know, I used the uh, Graham's Celeste Demons and I went, these are... I loved playing with them. And so, um, Graham's got like a pile of sixty plastic demonettes that he's never going to use. So I'm like, Graham, I'll have them. <laughs> you know, I'll buy them off you because, you know, I I want to do a de- I want to do my own Sinesh demon army, twenty five hundred points, which will mean that you know once the Zinch army's done as well, there'll be like ten thousand points of demons, twenty five hundred points of each army. Now, look, when that's all painted, I'd love to get that on the channel as well for a 10,000 point game. That would be really oh, just 10,000 points of high elves. Yeah, that'd be really with cool. A, with a, like a mass produced Banner of the World Dragon. <laughs> and you only have one. There can be only one. Go back to your Highlander reference earlier. <laughs> <laughs> they can just pass it to each other. It's, uh, you need it now. So one of them runs away in combat and then the banner explodes and that, no one could yeah. ever have a banner of the world dragon ever again. <laughs> that would never happen. Iowa's would never run away. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. It's not, it's not believable. <laughs> Demons, very good. Um, well, my final choice is, uh, I don't know if there's a bit of a cop out or generic or not, but I've just gone for the law. Um <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've been talking about the law so much. <laughs> I know it's just possibly a cop out. You know, it's just it's it's the the bigger picture of most of what we spoke about. Like 
all of the factions are fleshed out, I think. Even the ones that don't get that much attention. No. Like, I love the Chaos Dwarf lore, even though they didn't have an army book since what Warhammer, uh, sorry, um, White Dwarf presents Chaos Dwarfs in God knows what edition that was. They had a ravening hordes. They, yes, they did have ravening hordes. And then they had the, is it Tamukan or Tamukan or something? The um, Tamukan book, yeah. Tamukan, yeah. yeah. And it, I like I like the classic. Well, this is models rather than law, but I like the old hat ones, and I like the new. Well, you can't get them anymore. <laughs> Newer Forge mod, world models, but there though it's great. Like uh, they got split off from the migrating dwarves, and they just found this ash raining down plain, which is totally inhospitable. Decided we'll set up the settlement there. Realized that all their prayers to their ancestor gods weren't working. Made a deal with Hashut, who knows what Hashut is, and then just were corrupted completely into this twisted evil race. But it's like there's there's practically none of them, so they have to use industry and like terror to just keep everything in line and keep them on. Then they're they're just barely scraping on by keeping at the top of that. I love everything to do with the uh, the Chaos Dwarf floor. Um, but like even things like ogres, which are like, they're not really that much involved with the main plot line, but they have their own stuff about the fights with the, is it the Sky Titans and stuff like that? Yeah. How, where their technology and where their um, history comes from and they're all, and the Great Moor, who knows what that is, but it's sort of partially explained with that. And, I like how the same event is seen by different races in different ways. Like the two entailed comet is the uh, sign of the coming of Sigmar for the empire, but it's the sign of the coming of Sotek for the lizard men. So yeah. it's like this whole, like all these different races, you're looking at it from one perspective, but when you see what another army looks at it, like, all oh, right, that's the same thing. That's the same comet and something else significant happened for that. And like what the the um, the old ones plan? Like, did they actually have one? Are the are the slan just reading like uh, an old operating manual that nobody needed anymore, or is it really what they intended? And are they interpreting it right? Because no slan exists now that spoke to the old ones. So are these corrections and things they're doing? Is that right? Is that what the old ones would have wanted? Did the old ones intend anything anyway? Yes, no. Who knows? They were wrong about Sotek, except a few of them. And then, oh yeah, there is a, a plaque of Sotek, but it isn't repeated in any other part of the grand plan. But it turned out to be right. And who is Sotek? And like all this stuff, it's just it's great. Yeah, and, and you know it goes back to me, you know, talking about the map. Yeah, they've got a map, and there's so much rich history about all the different areas, all the different coat of arms, all the different army color schemes. I, I, and it's probably the most frustrating thing about them doing the end times is the free one of the, away. You know? One of the most frustrating. one of the frustrating things. <laughs> Easily, you know, twenty twenty to thirty years of rich history and depth and fiction and work. You know, yeah, and, and it's 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 layered as well, isn't it? Like every redraft, every new army book was in, added a bit more, take a bit more away swap an element out and it just builds up and it's layered and it's it's comprehensive and it's deep and it's, it's been in that Ugh. yeah I like the the i just i can't think off the top of my head of a bit of law in warhammer fantasy that i don't like whereas in 40k i can think of quite a few <laughs> right I love the 40k law as a whole, yeah, brilliant. But I struggle to think of law in Warhammer Fantasy that I don't like or I can't get on board with compared to. Yeah, it's uh... you know, I just think, yeah, it's well well written. Minus, actually, there's two things: Storm of Chaos, the end, the ending to Storm of Chaos. But that didn't happen. That, but that didn't happen. That, that officially didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and obviously the ending to the end times, yeah? But yeah. Um, I don't recognise that. But other things, you know, it's just... It's just 
Like, I, I like, you know, just even like Nagash. Like, we haven't mentioned Nagash at all in this. And he. Well, I've, I've had like two episodes which were Nagash heavy. So. All oh, right. Well, <laughs> Please see know. those episodes for Nagash. But, you know, that, that guy who sets off a series of events that affect the whole world, you know? And, you know, the amount of rich history and lore and chain of events and causality that comes from that is just fantastic, you know? Which doesn't... Which spans hundreds, if not thousands of years. And yeah, it affects... Uh, it, it oh, sorry. It also affects the world people live on in regards to the map, you know? Like, our, you know, the Tomb King area of the world, yeah, the land of the dead is sparsely populated because he went and poisoned the river, you know? So it's uh that's like the fantasy that in there's these things happen over thousands of years and there's like multiple world changing things going on at the same time. Like polar gates collapse and high elves are trying to stop that. Um the gash rises not too long after. Um uh, after the like the the split, um, and all his interactions with the um, with the world cause like uh, yeah, the death of Nehekaran civilization, the creation of vampires. So the world's dealing with the undead and demon invasions and chaos invasions and all this stuff's going on. Everyone's got a different take on it. Everyone's got a different way of dealing with it. Either trying to make it more successful or stop it. Mm. And they're all these, uh, while they're all dealing with their own internal stuff, like the Empire isn't always a unified force. For 700 years, it was split into three. And it's had incompetent emperors and good emperors. And they're trying to keep themselves together while also facing these external threats and negotiating with the High Elves and the Dark Elves who hate each other. And also getting involved with the rival kingdom, Britonia, who were being artificially held back technologically by the, possibly by the wood elves as a buffer state and like all this thi- all of this stuff that's going on that would be one major crisis but there's three are all being dealt with and other things going on at the same time by all these different uh, races yeah and it's great <laughs> it's, it's absolutely fantastic you know and, and that's just like you know that you all those things you talk about talks about the war on the surface and then you've got the war underground which is the dwarves and the orcs and the skaven you know and and, and all those things and you could go on for fucking years about that as well it's just yeah in the meantime there's the entire underground metropolis at skaven blight and who knows how many billions of skaven under if they erupt that's another problem that would they be able to deal with it probably not well yeah we're like in the in the you know, you had the realms of Estilia, Tilia, and can't remember the other one. The border um, princes, the border, border yeah. princes, yeah, and they just get wiped out overnight <laughs> when the skaven come up. <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's. Um... But then they kept uh, non-end times. They kept that reason that doesn't happen is because the skaven hate each other and they're always trying to screw each other over. Out of thirteen, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's great. It's all great. All of it. I'll complain. I, I can't disagree with you in any way. <laughs> Just love it. Um, so I'll take that as a slight cop out. But <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Move, I think we should move on to my final one. Go on then. And this is my number one favorite thing in Warhammer Fantasy. Yeah. Drum roll. Archeon, the ever chosen. Is but, my right. favorite thing in Warhammer Fantasy. I love him. He I is. Do, he's do you know the you, best story. Do you know you sighed when I said an Arion. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's got the best story. He's got fantastic model. He's got fantastic rules. And to to summarize, you know, I was talking about how the Chaos Gods are the big baddies, yeah. This yeah. guy gets the allegiance of all four, all four of them, all four of them put their faith in him to deliver, which he does. Um, but, <laughs> uh, 
you know, it, it, it's, it's like this mortal man, yeah, who goes on to do these fantastical deeds and quests, and he breaks and bends the will of demons and creatures and travels the world looking for these artifacts and breaking armies by himself. Um, I can't think of anything about Archeon that I don't like. And, you know, whether, you know, and going like looking at his model, the model on foot is fantastic. The model on horse is fantastic. I'm not talking about the Age of Sigma one, but it's <laughs> like, I can't, this, this guy He's kind. Of, he's kind of like Darth Vader, okay. And don't kick off. But he starts off as a good guy, you know, who has like a terrible. Oh my god, he is kind of like a rip off of Darth, you know, Anakin Skywalker. Everything because... is a rip off of everything in this. Yeah, but he like he has like a tragic childhood, you know. Um, his he's got like this mixed bloodline between uh, like Norsk and, and Empire, so he's from Nordland. And his mother is whose empire is is raped by, you know, a, a chaos warrior. Yeah, and then he's born. His mum dies. He gets picked up by this like Sigmarite cult, and he gets trained as you know as a knight. You know, in this Sigma cult, and he goes round and he you know he's a decent fighter and things, but he soon realizes that. It's a joke, you know, worshipping Sigmar and Ulfric and like all this stuff and he's just like you know, he get, gets fucking angry and he's like if I, you know, I'm going to take the fight to chaos it, you know, and he ends up bringing bending the chaos gods to his will because by the end of it, by the time he's got all these artifacts and everything he's not serving chaos in a way. I know he's he goes about destroying the world, which is what they wanted, but he you know, every other every other person who deals with the chaos gods gets tricked or they get controlled or they get sucked up into the warp, you know, and tortured for all eternity. This guy bends them to his will. He bends greater demons to his will. Like greater demons bow to him. Like they go down on one knee to this guy. And it's just like how fucking cool is that? You know, it, he they literally bow to him, greater demons of Korn, Zeke, Nurgle, and Sinesh, because he is he is the shit. Um and just the stories about him getting the different the six treasures of chaos, you know. Um if you just take each one of those stories in its own, it's just fantastic. It's just incredible. Um, you know, he's he's the big baggy. You know, he is the face of the enemy, and he wins, which is brilliant. How often do the bad guys win? He does. Well, <laughs> that's that's in dispute. <laughs> fact check, <laughs> fact check appears now. Other sources claim that this that never happened. No, but uh, I I know what you mean. But it's it's just like. Uh, you know, if you if you took it before the end times, yeah, he's gathered. He's got his six treasure of chaos. He's gathered the biggest chaos army that the world has ever seen. He's well, just the biggest army that the world has ever seen. He's got. He's he's brought all the conflicting tribes, all the chaos gods together, all the all the different champions that you've heard of. They are all under his banner. And he is about to unleash this terror upon the old world, starting with Kislev. It's just badass. And that's where it stops there. That's where the story ends, because if you yeah. read all the army books, that's that's the coming of Archeon is the end, you know, that's the end times. And then Lord we'll never know what happens after that. And you that. never know what happens after that. And it, but it's just the fact that you can put a face on the guy who's gonna bring around the end of the world. He's um his model is very impressive as well. It's just, he's just, it's just, and the other thing as well is he doesn't need to. No offense to an Aryan, but he doesn't need, you know, <laughs> he doesn't need to be on a Griffin Deathclaw. He doesn't need to be on a Hippocrine. 
a hippogriff, you know, Luanka. He doesn't mean he needs to be on a black dragon, Melikiv. He doesn't need to be on, you know, whatever. He's just a guy on a horse. Pretty big horse. I know, so. he's, I know he's not a guy on a horse, but, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's not on a throne being carried by other dwarves, you know. He's, you know, he's, he's not this big, massive Nagash model or whatever, you know. He's just... He's a fucking amazing guy. I know. I know he's not just a guy, but he's just a guy who's through his sheer will and determination. Like he gets tested by all four chaos gods, right? At one point, and Nurgle puts all these like plagues and pestilence on him as that test, and he gets through it through sheer force of will. He gets through that test. You just through his sheer determination, he gets through that test and all those diseases. And then when Zinch tests him, Zinch puts him in this a maze of mirrors. Yes, so he can't find his way through the maze. So he blindfolds himself, and he goes. He wakes his way through the through the maze on sheer instinct. And then Sinesh is like puts all these like pleasures and stuff to him and he's you know all these temptations and he's like no fuck you he's got he's got six magic items yeah um his the first one he gets is the mark of chaos yeah which is the four chaos marks on him yeah which is great he's got um the armor of Morkar, um the eye of shireen he's got dolgar the steed of the apocalypse and then i can never pronounce this one but it's like uzul which is like the Slayer of Kings. So that sword has got a demon bound in the blade, yeah, which hungers for, you know, empowers the blade and it hungers for um, for blood and stuff. And uh, yeah, it double it, no armor saves and it doubles his attacks. So if you unleash, when you unleash this, normally the sword is just no armor saves, yeah? So he has five attack space, no armor save, but you can unleash the sword which doubles your attacks to 10. So 10 attacks, no armor save. Um, but any roll of a 1 to hit either hits you or the unit you're in. And you can choose where you want to put that hit, yeah? Mm, so that could end up actually killing himself. <laughs> really hard to kill himself, though, because he's got... He, he Once he hits, he needs a 4 to hurt himself. Oh, all right. Oh, he could, has he got some rule that... You can never wound him on worse than a... Yeah, so his combination of stats is he's got, like, weapon skill 9 or weapon skill 10 or something. He's strength 5, toughness 5. He's got 3 or 4 wounds. He's, like, initiative 8 or whatever. Um, He's got 5 attacks, 10 attacks. He's leadership 10. He's got... um, He's got a 1-up armor save because he's got a 3-up armor, 1-up from the horse, and then his shield... He's either got a one up or a two up armor save, but his armor of Morkar means he cannot be wounded on better than a three up. Yeah. So isn't Morkar the first ever chosen? Yeah, he is. Yeah. I see. Bit of bit of chaos law, I know that. Yeah, and only Sigmar was able to defeat him. Yeah. So that's like really cool. Um, and then with a combination of his other things, he's got a three up ward save as well. Oh right. <laughs> So he is it is quite hard for him to hurt himself because he needs a four he need to roll one, they need to roll a four to wound, and then he gets a three up ward save off off the top of it as well. That's uh, I don't think ward slaves should go that low for non high elf armies, just to clarify. <laughs> he, he, um What was I gonna say? If you watch tri- Triple Crown Wargaming, they've got their own like YouTube channel now. Um, one of their first games on the channel is they do this like bad boy beatdown and they have a 3,000 point game of Warriors of Chaos versus 3,000 points of High Elves, yeah? And it's Tyrion versus Archeon. And they've got like some special stipulations, but it's like if Archeon kills Tyrion, then Warriors of Chaos automatically win. And if Tyrion kills Archeon, then the High Elves automatically win, so on and so forth, right? And the High Elves use their very smart, or sometimes people can say underhand tactics, and they arcane on forging on Archeon, right? That spells four. <laughs> Let me just defend the High Elves here. 
Um, and so they blow his armor up, right? And he's like, okay, fine. You know, I doubt my armor, but I still have my free up ward safe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Tyrion and Archeon end up in combat with each other, and Archeon like kills him in one round of combat. He's just like, <laughs> head attack, threes to hit, twos to wound. No, I was saying, go. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's quite a lot. <laughs> it's like, that's right, quite a lot to deal with. Like Tyrion's like, oh, I'll get four attacks at strep seven. Yeah. So he wounds, but he's like, yeah, free at war two. <laughs> it's just like, I felt so bad for Tyrion because it's such a bad mismatch. <laughs> you know? T- Tyrion's not great. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they made Archeon. Um, like I, I'm not gonna talk about end times, but you get he's like stronger in the end times book. Uh, but he's still on the same model, and that's what I liked about him because you had like um, all these other big models and stuff. But it's just like no, the Archeon model is such a cool model. Um, he is he is the bad boy, you know. And I like how he's leading the largest chaos army ever seen, or the largest army ever seen, and he rides a horse. I know it's the Steed of the Apocalypse, and it's a fucking awesome horse. But he rides a horse. He's not riding a dragon or anything. He's got followers who ride dragons. And he's just like, I'm on a horse. You know? Stays the old old fashioned horse. All yeah. this dragon nonsense. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just um I just think he's fantastic. I just you know, there's these series there's this um there's two novels that came out about him which I haven't read and it makes me feel bad as an Archeon fan having not read him, but like I is he the like... protagonist? Like, are you following him, or is it about someone? No, it's trying following to him. No, it's following him. Yeah, he's the protagonist of the stories. Um, but you can get him for like eight pounds as an ebook. Yeah, or whatever on Kindle, or whatever. But I hate, I hate ebooks. I'd rather have You'll have the, the paper. The, the paper, but because the book's out of print, it's like a hundred and twenty pound for the book. Oh dear. <laughs> Not paying that, <laughs> you know. So just, just print it out. <laughs> if, if someone at Black Library is listening and they, <laughs> and they have one, not, of those, no. <laughs> they have one of those books. You know, you know. I'm just saying, if they want to give you that world map and if you want to give me the Archeon books, yeah, if, they, if they want to divvy up all that expensive stuff they've got to <laughs> us, then that's I, I won't. I've no objection to that. Yeah, he was in that that ten thousand point battle that we were talking about before. Um, one of the people in that had him and his twenty knight equivalents that he rides around with, whatever yeah, they call Swords of Chaos. Swords yeah. of Chaos, and they hit the um, the Phoenix Guard, um, who stayed around for a bit, but then just collapsed under the the weight of the attacks. Yeah, it, 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 when you're fighting against Archon, is you know just put all your attacks into the unit he's with. <laughs> he's, he's you're not killing him. You're not killing him. You know, um, he but I but going back to his law, it's just he, I can imagine watching a movie about him, like an Aryan, I suppose, as well. But I can imagine watching a movie about Archeon where he has this tragic childhood, he's he has this upbringing where he's trained as a devout follower of Sigma and he's a knight, and then it turns out that he's been lied to all his life and he tries talking to Sigma and Sigma doesn't listen, and so he goes on this quest and this journey. And which leads him across, you know, the far corners of the the world, and he he starts off small, you know, with the small following of the Swords of Chaos are his first followers that he gets, yeah, and they follow him throughout his career, and that's why they're so hard because they've been with him for such a long time, um, and then oh, you know, and then by sheer force of will and determination, he. He becomes the biggest, meanest son of a bitch on the planet. Like, yeah. Crowned by Bellacor, I believe. Well, Bella, yeah, he was. Cr- <laughs> this He's is the other thing that I think makes him cursed, a badass. Cursed to uh, always crown the ever chosen, never be it. Yeah, so like Bellacor is like, tries to put this trick on it, like, tries to place this trick on him where, um, when the last item that, um, Archeon gets in his quest is the crown of domination, yeah? And um, he's got all the other five items, but, you know, Bellacor's like, oh, I'm gonna p- 
play this trick on you where um you know i'm going to steal the crown you know at the last you're going to unveil the crown through doing these tasks and then i'm going to like steal it off you or whatever yeah um but Bellacor realizes that you know i think it's like he realizes it's a bad idea <laughs> yeah um and um you know, he, he ends up crowning him. But if you look at the Bellacor model that's been recently released by Games Workshop, it's a fucking gorgeous model. It's massive. You know, that's the guy who's bowing to him. <laughs> this is cool. Um, for the for those who do follow Toy Soldier Tales, you'll notice that like my symbol is based off Archeon. It's not the same as Archeon because of trade right, copyright and all that yeah, stuff. Let's just hope that the Black Library people and the barman at Bugman's are listening, but the lawyers are not. No, well, you know, I when I got it done, I was like, I want this as inspiration, but can you make it copyright <laughs> like, safe? And they did. So, you know, it's got no, you know, none of the things on it and they made it distinct, just differently distinct. But it's like, I am willing to put this guy as the badge of my channel. <laughs> that's how much I like him, yeah. Um, and that's why he's like plastered all over it. So I have, you know, and he 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 was always the model that I wanted. Um, and so I've got him. I've got the model for him, and I've got a model for him on foot. But I can't bring myself to paint him because. I don't want to, you know, you know, I don't want to do a bad job. Yeah, I love, you know, I've got such a thing for that model as, as a, you know, he's they're still sat unmade, unpainted because I just don't want to. I don't want to catch twenty two there, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I'd love to. You do the, but the other thing as well is like if I paid someone who was good to paint them, I'd be like, yeah, I didn't paint that. <laughs> I was thinking of that for me, um, dragon, and the, that, it was that that's. Stop me doing it. And the quote for five hundred pounds that said, "I'll do it myself." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and there you go. Um, Archeon more successful than Abaddon. <laughs> <laughs> just, just oh the... man, Abaddon! Like, yeah. So when I, as I said, Chaos Space Marines was the first army I ever played. Abaddon, the big baddie, yeah. Or Horus, but you know, Abaddon was alive. So um I used to have an Abaddon model, I used to love playing with him and I was like, Oh my god, Demon Sword Drachnia or whatever it is, yeah. Um Similar, you know, he's similar, isn't he? He's, he's, if not the same. He's got the four chaos marks, he's got this special armor, he's got this special sword, you know, and all this stuff. It's just it's just had thirteen failures for he said 13 to his name. Failures, yeah. And if you read the the books, like the Horus Heresy books, and it's like, and Horus has got his four followers, you know, you know his four main guys, um, and Abaddon's just always made out to be like, you know, he's like the strongest and the hardest, but he's always made out to be like a little, like a bit of a bitch because he's like you know always complaining and he's always like grumpy you know and like all this and it's just like and the other ones are like playing tricks on him and you know and, and like laughing at him and stuff and it's just like yeah you know you're not Archeon yeah I know Archeon or you are based off each other or whatever but if you look at Archeon's story compared to Abaddon's it's so much better yeah, it's, uh, if you accept end times, which, of course, that's up for debate, um, he achieved his goal in one, as opposed to having 13 attempts at it and still failing. Well, I'm, I'm, happy, not to, uh, like, I'm happy not to include end times in his story, as long as we don't include Storm of Chaos, because the ending to Storm of Chaos really upset me. <laughs> was it like Valton just gets murdered and... Grimgor Einhide headbutts him to death or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so like Archeon's fighting both Volton and um, Lufa Hus. Yeah, so he's fighting both of them at the same time, and he virtually kills Lufa Hus. So Lufa Hus is like lying there dying, and him and Volton are like going at it, and he beats Volton, but is wounded himself, 
yeah? And as he's, like, standing over Volton about to kill him, he hears this noise behind him, and he turns around, and Grimgor headbutts him, right? And when Grimgor headbutts him, he breaks, like, the eye of Shireen in his helmet, which means he's all, like, all dazed and confused and stuff. And then Grimgor goes on to beat him down into the dirt as he's... So, so one, Grimgor attacks him from behind, yeah? <laughs> but it's like, you know... um, and then Grimgore like stands over, you know, Archeon's body or like and he's like, I'm the best and then walks off. Yeah. It's just like No wonder they said eighth edition set before any of this happened. <laughs> it's like it's the shit. Don't worry about that. But no, like the story chaos was a bad ending, you know, but you know, it But if you forget about that, you still you still class um and you know, I when I was reading the end times for the first time, and I thought I I thought that Archeon was going to lose because I was like, you can't just end the world, yeah. Um, and, Wrong. Yeah, you know, and 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 I and so I was so when Archeon's like fighting everyone, <laughs> you know, like down in that like the cave or whatever, you know, and he's fighting and beating everyone i was like this is i love how hard they've made him i love how cool he is yeah um and i just expected at some point someone was going to do something all of a sudden to stop him yeah or the old ones were going to come back you know and do something yeah but it didn't <laughs> that was like <laughs> okay <laughs> you know so uh yeah, I was enjoy I was enjoying him winning up until the point where he did win. It, uh, that's the that's the curse of chaos. Yeah, it is, I suppose. Yeah. Was well, it um the philosopher Tom Hardy said, um, victory has defeated you. <laughs> victory has defeated you. <laughs> <laughs> that seems an appropriate uh Ends to your top five there. Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, I yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, so quite like the uh, bit, bit more. Well, I'm always positive about fantasy. Just on what you said about what the film would be like. If it, I, I thought of a film um, about Alithanar and his exploits in Nagaroth, which would just be like John Wick. <laughs> or Rambo, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> yeah, some sort of crossover between the two. <laughs> Rambo, First Blood, Part Seventeen. Yeah, just, just that bow that that moon goddess gave him, just shooting people's heads off. Well, the, the thing is, like with whatever movie, if they're never going to do a movie, I say that. But Hollywood are running out of ideas. But it's like <laughs> if they were going to do a movie, then they have to bring they have to do a movie that everyone could like relate to. So the Inarian one, they could do a movie about that, yeah, because elves, everyone knows what elves are. Elves living in peace and harmony. They get under attack by demons. He comes back from his travels and he leads them. Yeah, that's a classic story. And you know, but at the end, he's in far in you know he's. Fallible, is that the right word? And fallible, yeah. Yeah, any um fallible, yeah. And then it, but and then it leads on this cliffhanger of dun dun dun, you know, you know, and so you can lead on to something else, yeah. So I think that's a good story that you could do for it. Um the story of Sigma, that's another one. You know, he starts off as, you know, a prince and then he you know leads yeah. and gets Just the empire together. Conan, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> Kind of, but you know, and it, it, you know, but and I think Archeon's another one, yeah. And so it's just there's some things that you just can't do, <laughs> you know, like the Lizardman defense of Hoexatl or whatever, you know, like it's, it's <laughs> an unintelligible language, you know? yeah. Well, they don't even, they're all like mind communication and you know, and stuff like that. They all talk via mind powers, don't they? So it's just be <laughs> subtitles on the bottom of the screen and the lizards going. Yes, you know, like whatever. Like, and then, it doesn't then work. Cut, cut <laughs> to wide shot of Temple City, and there's a massive nuclear explosion, and then 
end question mark <laughs> you know like you know there's, there's um yeah there's, there's you know war of the beard would probably be a good one they could do going back to your war of the beard people know what dwarves are they know what elves are that'd be an interesting one but then you got like malekith in the background like he 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 you know it's but... he would say uh, as revenge for not being the true phoenix king uh, i'm going to do i'm going to do this this crazy stuff yeah. but the, you know there's some things you can't do like i don't think the vampire stories in, i love the how vampires work in warhammer fiction compared to like other vampire stories where they sparkle in the sun you know it's um you know but I don't think like doing a vampire film based in the Warhammer world would work because you have to build up like, well, where do vampires come from? Um, why is their realm of Sylvania allowed to exist? You know, and you know, and all this stuff. You know, so uh, what, a witch hunter, yes, you know, but what you know, he wor- you know, he worships Sigmar. Like, who the fuck Sigmar? You know, and like all this stuff is, you know, some things like that it just doesn't work because there's not. You have to give. I would like to see a witch hunter reskin of um, Blade. Be... <laughs> I would. I would pay for that. <laughs> Maybe I'd be the only one, but I would. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on again. Um, Appreciate it. I mean, the cash should have been good enough incentive, but you know, the conversation's been good as well. Um, do you want to tout your uh, your wares, your Raid Shadow Legends, or <laughs> whatever it is you do? Oh, no. Um, yeah, so you can find us on YouTube, uh, Toy Soldier Tales. We have um, battle reports that get released whenever I can record, um, but quite often now, um, lockdown's finished. Uh, we do run our own podcast as well, but it's nowhere near as good as this one. Um, oh, you undercut me there. I was gonna say, where did you get that idea of doing a podcast? <laughs> and then um, we're also on Twitter at Toy Soldier Tales, and we're on Instagram and Facebook, Toy Soldier Tales. Um, I'm not very good on Twitter, so I wouldn't recommend no, that one. It's, but, it's, you've yeah. either got it or you haven't when it comes no, to Twitter, I, I'm, I think. I'm in not, I've not, I've not got it, but... Instagram and Facebook, I post pictures and, you know, I put links to the to the battle reports and stuff like that. So um, you will also see us at um, the Triple Crown Tournament in August. So look forward to seeing you there. I'll be spamming a lot of photos of that um, when it comes around. Yeah, well. Because that'll be quite good. All right, well, thanks very much, everyone. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.